So uh, welcome to Comic Con. Thank you. Is it going to be pretty crazy for you, I guess? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just go where I'm told and do what I'm told to say. <laughs> say what I'm told to say. But, um, you know, it, it's Surely you don't say what you're told to say. Yeah. You've got free will. No? Not in this show. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, you know, you, you're given boundaries and then you're allowed to play within the boundaries, yes. which you all, we all want, and the fans want. I mean, even my own sister's like, don't ever spoil anything for me. I don't want to know. No one wants to know. So, you know, we have to maintain that for the fans. Uh, how far are you into this, uh, filming season four at the moment? Filming seven right now. Uh -huh. And uh, we're, we're scripted up to ten. So we're, uh, we're moving along, trucking along. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, what, episode? Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? Uh, well, Scott's already said six, so you're, you've done about seven. We're, we're on to seven, yeah. Okay. Good. I love it. You just say Scott said. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Scott says you die really horribly in episode seven. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why, yeah, I wonder why it was being so nice to me. Uh, how many people have you killed off so far? You know, the, the, the death toll's rising. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see how many people riot when they watch. <laughs> Always prepared for that. Oh, that's interesting. So is, is there ever a sense with, with certain characters in this show, for example, certain fan favorites, certain Daryls, perhaps, is there anyone in this show who's untouchable? No. No, I mean, you know, we wouldn't be the walking dead if, if there was some sort of force field around <laughs> any of our cast. Do you know what's happening? Do you, get, you know, do you get scripts now with a sense of trepidation? Because anyone can go at any time in this universe. It, always anyone can go at any time, but... That's what makes The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, no, it's great. It's definitely a page-turning experience. Uh, how, much, how, how far in advance do you know about things, about things that happen, about feature episodes? Scripts as they come out. Really? And okay. so it's not like we get like five scripts in advance. We're only caught up maybe one before, or one after that we shoot. So um, we're not that much in the know. There is nothing hard and fast. Even when we make an, an early decision, sometimes the, the drama and the conflict comes from changing up those decisions. And last year I was told that I was going to be killed off, so it didn't happen. <laughs> so you, you kind of, you know, everyone kind of lives in, the, in a bubble in that sense. So uh, what's new for you this season? And how many zombie kills have you racked up so far? Oh well, you know I can't tell you that, but uh, you know it's, it's it's not it's not it's not a small amount. No. Four seasons in, is it difficult to come up with fresh kills that are that, can, that make it interesting for you, Greg? You know, I, I I would have to say this season the writers have written uh, some of the best zombie gags we've done yeah. up to date, and it's exciting for me. You know, when, when Scott and I started talking about this season, we wanted to make sure that the walkers maintained their threat level yeah. and they were you know in season three they were very easily dispatched so that was one of the first things that we started talking about and all the writers nicole Beatty, just wrote one of the scripts we did and every single zombie gag that she wrote was intrinsic to the storyline it wasn't a kill for the sake of a kill it all had an impact to the storytelling yeah. and that's it's really important to, to all of us rick versus the governor because that's what people want to see in this this season this collision course between the two guys mm -hmm. Uh, so, can you say anything about where that may go? I don't, yeah, I think it, there is an inevitability about it, and certainly um, he, there's some, definitely some unfinished business, and uh, yeah, I don't think the, uh, the fans are going to be disappointed. So what can we expect from the governor in season four, because he's pretty much gone full-blown Colonel Kurtz now, hasn't he? He's yeah, and I think what's interesting about him is he got, got him to quite a psychotic place at the end of season three. And it's about how we deal with that, really. I mean, he's both, you know, he's still around, you know, he's, he's still got unfinished business. And it's about how he deals with that. And they deal with it in a very exciting way and a, I think a really unexpected way as well. It's very interesting. I think Michonne is really going through, you know, uh, really making the decision to be with this community, but then really what are the repercussions of that for someone who's so much of a loner? Yeah. And so it's really kind of that navigation of self and, and really becoming a part of a group, even a small group, is not th something that she's naturally comfortable with. So, you know, how exactly does she really become a part of this group? And really, you know, that, that sort of lo looming issue for her of she has a certain degree of unfinished business and, and how does she navigate that? Uh, unfinished business, obviously, with the governor as well. I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't yeah. know. All I know. All I was about to say was unfinished business. <laughs> like, all right. There's always a sense with Daryl that he could be the guy to replace Rick. They, they, they could go at each other. Like there could be, they could be at loggerheads. Just it takes one little twist for that to happen. Isn't I it? mean, never say never. But, but, you know, the thing is, you know, Daryl's the type of guy, and you'll see in this season, he's, you know, if something needs to be done, he gets it done. 
but he doesn't want to sit around and get, get in everyone's face and be like, let's talk about your feelings. He, he, he's not that guy, you know? And everyone's trying to, you know, his love affairs and so forth. He's, you know, who's he going to hook up with and whatnot. You know, I mean, he's not, he's not against sex, but he doesn't want to cuddle in the morning, you know what I'm saying? So... You know, I don't know how that would play out. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of us, and we're in a prison, so if you're going to hook up with somebody, you're going to have to see him the next day. You know what I mean? So. Are you saying he's yeah. hooking up with Rick? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm trying to follow. <laughs> ne never say never. You know what I mean? He really is a liability, that man. Rick's a very attractive man. Is, yeah. A very attractive leader. Yeah. It is a prison, after all. You tell me, is the whole of episode eight just you and Daryl soaping each other up? <laughs> It is. It's just a very close, it's very arty, it's very art house though. Come on, there's, it's really, there's lots of detail. It's lots of very close shots. You don't see anything. Which you is, don't yeah, see it's anything. Tasteful, it's tasteful. It's tasteful, it's beautifully done. Yeah. And, and, and Bear has done a beautiful <laughs> score. <laughs> and Greg's prosthetics are astonishing. 